Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Juan Melinda Pereira. Today I would like to talk about some teachings of Zen Master Matsu. How we can relate to some of these teachings and use them to enhance in our practice. In his sermons, he talks a lot about the way in the famous book, uh, Sun Face Buddha, Moon Face Buddha, he says, the way needs no cultivation, just do not defile. If one wants to know directly, ordinary mind is the way. Just like now, with the walking, standing, sitting or reclining, responding to situations and dealing with people as they come. Everything is the way. So basically, he refers to all activities in our day-to-day -day life, even among people, not just in isolation. Because as Bodhisattvas, we need to be among people to save beings. Not an easy task. To develop balance and equanimity, First, there are some things we must do as preparation. We then take the boat to the waters. We can look at our activities and break them down to various situations. We can then isolate some things such as like our chores and rituals, you know, the mundane things that we do very hurriedly or find boring and not important, like making a cup of tea, ironing the clothes, just walking. There are actually great opportunities for this preparation. How can these small things be so special? There is a beautiful uh, dialogue between the Nanda Madinna and Upasaka Visaka, uh, husband and wife, in a formal life. It refers to the uh, three types of sensations, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. Goes like this. Whatever is experienced physically or mentally as pleasant and gratifying is pleasant feeling. Whatever is experienced physically or mentally as painful and hurting is painful feeling. Whatever is experienced physically or mentally as neither gratifying nor hurting is neither pleasant nor painful feeling. Visaka asks, in what way is pleasant feeling pleasant and in what way painful? Tamadina answers, pleasant feeling is pleasant in remaining and painful in changing. Painful feeling is painful in remaining and pleasant in changing. Neither pleasant nor painful feeling is pleasant, that means the neutral feeling is pleasant, in occurring together with knowledge and painful in occurring without knowledge. Which means that as long as we don't know, we do not know the value of neutral sensations, we always suffer. This self-awareness we and undervalue in small activities in our day-to-day -day lives is actually the ground that we lay for wisdom to occur. There are opportunities to strip away ignorance layer by layer. Looking at this way, we can now fully understand the words of Master Matsu. Not clinging to pain or pleasure does not mean one has to be detached or distant or unfeeling. It means that we just do not go to the two extremes because going to those extremes means becoming emotional a breeding ground for defilements to cloud our minds. Bodhisattvas use two hands to raise beings, wisdom, and also compassion. 
for right view to happen, so our minds must be clear to see the correct situation, the correct relationship, and then function correctly. This point of balance is so powerful that some teachers refer to this point as the point where you can break away from the 12 links, from the sansaric cycle. The link between sensation and craving, which leads to grasping, bhava, and so on. All these seems very easy because most times we struggle and stumble and we should because nothing is permanent. Even the neutral feelings that we talked about just now that makes us so insightful, nothing is permanent. We must not even pin our hopes on them like painful and pains and uh, pleasant sensations, they too change. But as awareness and wisdom develops, you see this impermanent nature and we'll be able to capture this as soon as it occurs. For me, Master, Master's teachings uh, gives us freedom in a world where Dhamma is presented in so many conceptual ways. There are lots of literature and teachings of various teachers and sometimes uh, that sometimes confuse and discourage us to really practice. One day, Tachu comes to see Masu and says, I have come here to seek Buddha, Buddha Dharma. And Masu says, that which is asking me right now is your own treasure, perfectly complete. It lacks nothing. You are free to use it. Why are you seeking outside? As we begin on the path, we go for refuge in the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, and the Sangha. They are the outer refugee, the external refugee. As Bodhisattvas, our ultimate refugees are Trikayas that we all have within us, mind, speech, and body that can be transformed to the three Kayas. However much we try to draw margins and separate the two, the, the, the three jewels, we cannot do so in a conceptual way. Even this body of ours can sometimes be our dharma, which tells us so many teachings. And the next time it can also be our sangha, supporting us to practice the way. They are all immersed in our dharma kaya like the great sea where all identifications and traces of individual rivers disappear and become one. Master Masu often emphasizes on not creating karma, be, be uh, both good and evil. His teachings on non-dualism are seen uh, not practical or conventional enough, enough in reality. But as I said earlier, there is a lot of noise, too many thinking going on these days about the Dharma, so many sources that has increased our dualistic thinking rather than taking a direct message of things we are carried away by too many analysis, which has actually taken us away from direct experience. These are degenerate times, short lifespans, declining health, diseases, war. We don't have much time. For me, Master Master's teachings puts us back to the basics. A firm, no-nonsense reminder about the value of this fleeting moment. Right here, right now. Whatever you do, don't get personal because everything is just an illusion and a dream. Like Master Master says, we have been standing long enough. Let us take care. So